Hi there, everybody. I just wanted to very quickly go through with you an example of how to enter in something in scientific notation onto your calculator. It's something that often causes some problems for some people, and a lot of times what I know is happening is you get an answer that's either 10 times too big or maybe even 10 times too small or combinations of uh, multiples of 10. Uh, the calculator that I'm showing here is a Casio, and on most Casios, you should find a button like this one down in the bottom sort of uh, middle or maybe bottom right that says EXP. On a lot of the Texas Instruments calculators, you're instead going to find an EE button. It really just does depend on whatever calculator you're using. If you look at your log key, if you have a calculator that has a log key, you might notice that, well, it's kind of hard to see on this one, but there's right above it then as the inverse function, 10 to the X. Even though that's one of the keys that I mentioned as being a possibility to use you know, for doing exponents, be really careful. Don't use it unless you uh, don't have one of these EXP buttons or EE buttons. Uh, probably that means that you have one of the older calculators. So let's say I've got something like this, where I'm taking the number 5.37 times 10 to the 8, and I'm going to uh, be entering that into my calculator and multiplying it by another number, like 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4. So that means that I would have something, really, that looks like this. Um, notice this, uh, this other little x right here. Um, this one right here isn't part of the scientific notation. It's actually the part that's saying, hey, let's multiply these two numbers together. So 5.37 times 10 to the 8, how am I going to enter that? Well, first thing I would do is I'd type in 5.37. Now, your next impulse might be to run over here to the times button, right? Because here you see times, and up here you're seeing times. In this case, no. If you do that, you're actually going to be multiplying by multiplying sort of thing. It, it really gets kind of messy. But because I know this whole thing here, this part in red, is an exponent, I'm instead going to hit my EXP button. At no point yet have I touched the multiplication button. Very important. Okay. So I hit the EXP button. On most calculators nowadays, you'll see uh, like in the top right-hand corner here, it'll have like little digits appear. That's because it knows that you're doing times 10 to the something. So it's you know going to put in the something there. Uh, if you have a graphing calculator where you probably had to push the EE button, um, you'll probably see that after the number 5.37, you now see like a little capital E or something like that. Again, it knows that you're doing exponents. I don't have to hit 10 or anything like that. My calculator knows this is times 10 to the something. All that I'll do now is press the 8. You should see a little teeny tiny 8 in the top here, or if you're using a graphing calculator, E8, you know, something like that. Uh, that means that I've now entered in this whole red number. Just to go over that again really quickly, 5 decimal 3 7 EXP 8. That's the combination I would have used. Now I look over here and I say, yeah, now I've got to hit the multiplication button because it's the actual operation of multiplying these two numbers together. So I hit the multiplication button. Now I'm going to enter in this green number pretty much the same way. I do have to be careful about this minus sign that's over here, though. So this is the way I type it in. 1 decimal 2 EXP again because I'm doing you know the whole exponent scientific notation thing here. Now I can hit the 4 button and you probably have one of these buttons that's, that says plus slash minus. It's not adding and subtracting, it's to change the sign of numbers. So hit that one and you'll see that your 4 just became a negative 4. That's exactly what we want. You need to avoid hitting this minus button over there because most calculators will start thinking you're trying to subtract a number. This is an actual order. All of these buttons right over here are actual functions for the calculator to do. You know, to take a number and multiply, divide, add, subtract. This one over here is change the sign of the number from positive to negative. I've entered in both numbers now. So I hit the equals button, click, and I get on my calculator this number, 64,440. Now remember in the notes I told you very specifically that your calculator unfortunately in no way keeps track of uh, sig digs for you. So I look back up here and I say, well, 
right here I've got three sig digs. We don't count any of the exponent stuff. We just look at the main number part, 5.37, that's got three sig digs. The green one only has two sig digs. That means my final answer can only have two sig digs because I'm multiplying. So I need to take this and move the decimal over to right about there. That means I've moved over four places and my final answer will be 6.4 times 10 to the 4. I'd suggest you try doing this on your calculator. See if you get the same answer as me. Make sure that it's not 10 times too big or 10 times too small. Some calculators will even automatically put in the scientific notation for you there in the final answer, especially if it's a really big number. But try this out. If you get a number that's different, it means that at some stage you are doing something wrong and it's not just as good. No, you can't do that. Okay, so try this out a few times, see what you can get, and good luck.